Okay, we're here with our defensive coordinator, Peter Sermon. Uh, go ahead and let me know in the chat if you have questions. We'll start with Jeff Ferrano. Good afternoon, Peter. Um, can you just talk about what you see when you watch uh, tape of TCU and in particular uh, their quarterback, Max Duggan, what are his uh, attributes? Well, the first thing that jumps off, Jeff, is uh, really the tempo in which they play, um, variety of the formations, the variety of the uh, – you know, some of the, the motions and the, and the different ways they present plays. So that can be a big challenge for us, just the, this, the alignment and the tempo uh, communication. And, uh, and the quarterback, Duggan? Yeah, you know, he's gotten better. You know, he's, uh, I think he's pretty good with, uh, with the ball in his hand and some of the zone read and the RPO game, uh, things that jump out. You know, he can get the ball out of his hand quickly. Uh, you know, he can uh, make some fast decisions. Uh, he's elusive with his feet. Um, and I think, you know, he's still continuing to get better and better in the, in the drop back pass game. And if I could ask you a follow up, um, you know, a couple of your primary playmakers, Cam Good and, and Coin, it, it didn't feel like they had a huge impact on the game, at least from my point of view, watching them. I didn't, they weren't real noticeable out there. Um, they used to making a lot of plays that you do notice. I just wonder what you thought of their play and, and what you need from them going forward. You know, I thought they, uh, they graded out actually really well, um, you know, in terms of what we asked them to do. Uh, the, what we need them to do, those, uh, the veteran players need to come through and, and they need to make veteran plays. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with, with how hard they played, with how they um, executed the techniques. You know, we need to be able to, as a team, we need to be able to affect the quarterback more with four-man uh, pass rush. Uh, and a lot of things – you know, that attributes to a lot of things. We have to do a better job in coverage. Um, you know, when the ball is just, uh, the ball's caught and it's a quick three-step and the ball is, is thrown, those are going to be very challenging situations to uh, rush the quarterback in. So we need to do a better job uh, coverage-wise uh, and putting it all together so the quarterback actually has to hold it for account for the, for the pass rush to be able to get, a, get home. On the flip side, it seemed like you defended the run quite effectively. That's something that, you know, we, uh, we felt we had an opportunity to do well. I think the guys up front, you know, two guys that jumped out on tape for me were J.H. and Luke. Uh, both those guys uh, in the interior part of the, the defensive line, I thought they were fantastic. Um, you know, really, J.H. made some plays. Luke, as you can imagine, made some plays in the run game as well. Uh, and, you know, we played it with some, some light boxes uh, in trying to uh, outnumber some things on the outside, and that's uh, – you know, I thought the, the run game was was positive, but other parts need to be significantly improved. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with uh, Trace Travers. Yeah, Coach, you said uh, Coin and Cam graded out well in what you asked them to do. What did you ask them to do in, with regards to the Nevada game? Yeah, um, you know, there were some things in, uh, you know, in the uh, run game setting edges, uh, coming underneath some blocks or some different techniques that we were asking them to do that were unique uh, to what the run game of Nevada had. Uh, they did a nice job in, in some of the coverage opportunities when we brought uh, some of our sim pressures. They did a nice job matching some routes. So um, what we need to be able to do is give them some a uh, little more uh, freedom to rush the quarterback on some of the down and distances and just uh, let them go and, and let them make some plays on, uh, on their own talent and kind of let them uh, – uh, let their experience come through a little bit more on, on some of those tackles and, and uh, let them go. And on the TCU, they have, uh, I guess, four guys who could easily run the ball for just about anyone in the country. What do you see from their run game in general? Yeah, it's kind of very similar to what, you know, talking about Jeff is they're going to, they're going to present a lot of different formations on uh, the run. The run variety is, is not immense. Uh, but the presentations are going to be immense. We're going to see a lot of inside zone, what we call a uh, wind here, some split zone. You're going to see the ball on the perimeter and some of the uh, traditional fly sweep looks. Um, and they have really good lateral team speed and they have a good variety at the wide receiver position. They have some uh, really, really nice size and they have some, some players that are going to be extremely inclusive. So it's a, uh, it's a good blend of, of how they built their, their uh, roster. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to David Bush with Baron Sider. Hi, Peter. Um, looking at the at depth charts, um, the way that uh, the uh, positions are assigned, uh, TCU looks a lot like Nevada. 
are they similar in things they do on the field uh, or uh, will it be a completely different look this week? You know, there's going to be a few formations, David, that, uh, that share some similarities. Um, but the, the style of play, the play calling, the tempo of the play is going to be uh, nothing, nothing alike from what, what Nevada had. And uh, to get back to a little, you, you know, could you go into a little more detail about Dugan, uh, the quarterback, and the sort of things he does? I know it's a, he only played a half one uh, Saturday, but you probably have some look at him from the past. Yeah, we uh, we've watched uh, all the tape on on uh, Max. Uh, I think he's a, a a good job. He's a you know a lot of these style of offenses. The the quarterback has to really be the engine that drives it. You know, he's a, a person that uh, makes a lot of decisions uh, on the RPO game. Um, you know, on the on the run game, he has to make some decisions on the keeps and the gives. Uh, so there's a there's a lot that goes through the quarterback in 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 these styles of offense. Um, and like I said before, he, he does a good job of making his RPO decisions. The ball can get out of his hand very quickly. Uh, when he does run the football, you know, he's, uh, he's a, uh, an effective runner with it. So he's going to be somebody that, you know, the ball goes through him. Um, the decisions are going to go through him. So he's going to be a, a huge part of, of the success um, of their offense. Thanks coach. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. We'll go back to Jeff Ferrano. Yeah, Peter, um, obviously Nevada had some high level talent at, at receiver, um, but they got behind you guys three times for big plays. What did you think about the performance of your secondary? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, those those three plays really stick out and they were uh, a huge part of the of the outcome of the game. Uh, I think when I went back and, and, and uh, charted everything, I believe there were three of 11 for attempted passes over 20 yards. Uh, we did have a pass interference. Uh, we need to do a better job of executing the technique, you know, and then, you know, there was, there was one ball in particular. It was, it was, uh, we had every opportunity to make that a contested ball and, and to win that um, at the point of, uh, of the catch. So we need to do a better job of understanding who we're playing. Uh, we need a better job of playing the technique, which we're asking. And then as the, as the play caller, I need to, I need to help them as well. So, it's uh, it's not just the eleven guys on the field, but it's it's how we're coaching in the week. It's uh, it's going to be some play call um, selections, and uh, you know we collectively this is a you know we're all in this together. We we enjoy it, and then you know when there's things to be corrected, we also need to you know all be in the same boat as well. And that that falls on me and, and the rest of the coaching staff as well. And and what kind of challenges do the uh, TCU receivers present? What what's that group look like? They're going to have size, you know, they have, you know, two or three guys that I believe are over six, two, six, three. So they're going to be able to take, uh, you know, some jump balls. They're going to be able to catch some contested balls. And then, you know, the, the other, you know, kind of half of the, the receiving core is, is going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, doesn't mean any less effective, but sometimes they can run some different route trees and they, and they present a little bit uh, of a different uh, flavor and a different tempo of the RPO game with their quickness. So, uh, we're going to have to tackle people in space in the RPO game. You know, we're going to have some some one-on-one -on -one tackles when the ball is thrown. Um, compared, you know, depending on what how they want to handle uh, the box count on defense. So we're going to have to do a good job winning one-on-ones like like we always do in the secondary, and do a good job of affecting the quarterback when when the down and distance presents itself. Thanks. Safe travels. Thank you. Okay, uh, Trace Travers. And this, this is a bit of a silly question, considering how much personnel has changed since the last time you played TCU. But I guess, what changes do you see from that game to seeing them on film from last week in 2020? Well, there's going to be some similarities. Um, there's more similarities than dissimilarities. But, you know, like, like anything, it's uh, offensive. You have philosophies. But uh, as philosophies go, I think everything's going to continue to run through um, the skills, the strengths of your particular uh, offensive skill players. So there's going to be some things that, that we have looked back on that and uh, we see some similarities, but, you know, the game is, is ever evolving, uh, you know, and then I think as you develop as a coach or as you change as a coach and um, you're, what you're doing, how you're calling the game, uh, those are always, those are always in, in flux. So uh, similarities, a lot of similarities, but there's going to be some new wrinkles and some new flavors that, that are different. Fantastic. Thank you.
Hey, anybody with the final question for coach? Hey, coach, I think you're good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. All right, bye-bye.